Hello, welcome back. Today I want to do a video about uh, some screenwriting software that I do use. Um, I recently took a look at the one called Trelby again. For a little bit, this program seemed to be abandoned, but it looks like it's got maintainer and new contributors. And this 2.4.10 is actually a release as of last month, actually, in October. But this program's pretty good from what I can see. Um, it gives you a lot of different things that uh, other commercial programs, like a popular one for Linux users, is actually called Fade In. It is a commercial script writing program if you're writing scripts essentially for doing uh, short films or writing maybe a script for a movie if that's what you're wanting to do or a tv show i'm currently in the process of just writing a basic short film i'm just mainly just randomly just making this story up right now that i'm looking into with this stuff if i highlight right here you'll see it says shot over here in the upper right hand corner this is for a shot for telling what the shot should be this is location information this is just actions of describing what the actor should be doing and kind of how they should be acting you have a transition so something i can do here is i can hit enter and i can right click and you have different options here so you could do character and parenthetical, parentheticals, which I normally was putting this camera stuff in that. You really don't want to. What I'm actually going to do is just character. Right now, I'm just going to call it man. And this would be dialogue. But what I'm going to do is right click, do this, capital zero, period, capital C, period. This means off camera talking. So... OC means off camera and I'm just literally now when I hit enter is switched to dialogue if it doesn't do that by default you can go in here select dialogue so I'm just gonna put something like you have woken up and right now the girl currently doesn't have a name it's just random stuff so I can do it because it defaulted back to character I can do girl and you can do the parentheticals yourself by just hitting shift and hitting that. Let's see. Looking confused at man. Yeah, right. So what I can do here is now just give her some text to actually say. And she could put something like I can just put what am I doing, doing here, did you, so, now it's dialogue, so you really don't need to know, and other things, if it's not gonna on the fly do spell correction, so you can just go to tools, spell checker, found no errors, so, I can just go here, I'm actually just gonna add an A, <laughs> And bring back up. I'm just going to hit Control S to save. Bring up Tools, Spell Checker. It still says found no errors. So, what you want to do for spell checking, put your cursor at the very beginning of the page you want it to check. Bring up Spell Checker. Word doesn't. You can click Suggest Replacement. So obviously this one I would leave, so I'm actually going to tell to skip that one, C's, so I don't like that. I can just do skip, evidence, do that, we'll hit OK, and click replace, and this one, we'll do that, replace, so with this, obviously, so there's that, so obviously, you know, try to use words that are more, you know, regular words for stuff. When you have it like this, I'll hit Control S. Now you can select in this program, you can set a specific uh, PDF viewer. So you can hit PDF. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't know the PDF, but 
it just defaults to ocular on my KDE. So it defaults to this default title page because I did not set anything. Then on export, as you can see, it's using courier, which courier, which is the default text you usually want to use in this, even though it was out of alignment in the program or was, it shifts it back into place like it should be. So what you can do is you can go here, you can go to Taya for adding your title page, you can go to script, title page. I'll go to this and just do the girl by, and I'll just put Shane. Okay. And here I'll just do something like this. I'll do phone, phone. And then down here I can type email and just leave that. And then I can do that. And then when I go back to the PDF preview, it'll update the title page. So there's that. And then you have this, obviously. The other program I was testing is actually a uh, Visual Studio Code. I was using the open source version just called Code. It does not like to load up properly. It kind of freezes. So, but with this, because it's using the Fountain plugin, I have a better fountain installed, actually. And you have to do your title. It's using Markdown pretty much. Credit author. So if I'm here, I can actually hit that and it'll give you your different uh, stuff for your title stuff when you're doing your interiors and your different things. So I'll actually put the cursor down here. Let me go to the very end of the text here. I need to enable auto wrap. So if I want to do, you know, you can hit enter a second time and it'll kind of give you suggestions. So you could do like exterior. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do fade to hit that. And then I'm just going to do exterior day. You can do day. And then let's see bar. You want to kind of maintain stuff, but it also has this here. So you can do show live preview, which is like this. But I like to do PDF preview. So once you do that, you get that, you get the fade to, it puts it in the proper location. So, you know, you can do script writing in this. You just need to know the specific tags you need to use, which is good if you're more of a developer type. But I need to go in and... uh. I haven't used code in so long, so I need to go in and configure code wrapping so this stuff will wrap at a certain point. But my main thing that I prefer to use right now is Trelby. It's really good. The other program that I've noticed that I did suggest in the beginning, I'm actually going to... And the other program that I suggested earlier in the video is Fade In. This actually is a program developed by Kent Tessman. And as you can see, this is a software that some Hollywood script writers do use and some independent filmmakers, you know, you see some game developer person in here also. So, but with this program, they do have a download. You can download it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. You do want to purchase this program though, if you want to use it beyond a certain number of pages. But something you should do with this program, if you're not going to use this program, is scroll down here to Extras, go to Fonts, and download Courier Screenplay and Courier Prime. So you have the fonts that you can install on your Linux system or Windows or Mac for the text type that most people use for writing scripts. But as you can see, this does all the stuff and you can, you have all of your other stuff, your scene heading, your action character, dialogue, transitions, shot, which would be describing how the shot should look or how it should be done for the director. This is just good stuff. So here on the Trelby GitHub, you can actually see the latest release is from September 9th. So it's fairly new, but the thing I do like is because the uh, last time I looked at Trelby, there were no contributors. I think there was one. So I like 
that there's contributors here. And you see other stuff like from last week, last year. You know, you have this stuff here that's fairly recent, two months ago. I do like that it's more under active development now. So Trelby is something I do recommend if you want to stick with pure open source or you can use Visual Studio Code or the code open source and install the better fountain plugin so you can just write markdown but specific to the fountain programming um, to do that if you want to have your PDF view in real time so you can actually see your script on the side of code in real time while you're typing so you can see the finished thing while you're typing you just got to make sure you know the different script writing stuff you know you got to know that you got to know all of these elements and what you have to type in for them to be correct and obviously you can get that on the fountain website so if you search fountain script you can get fountain.io and this is the essentially a programming language for script writers and there's a lot of programs that use fountain uh, if you have a script written in fountain you can import it into Trelby. Uh, you can also import it into that fade in program also that you can actually do that with that but in here you get your syntax and yes there is a lot of it but you have your actions you know it's just basic text obviously but you have your scene descriptors you know that you can do your actions and everything you have your character there and then some dialogue and then person off scene so os is off scene you can do on radio you know stuff like that you can do you know and just to show this for the thing that i did in Trelby for the man off camera so what I'm gonna do is delete this so what I'm gonna do is man o c now I'm gonna go here and do so you have woken up save it and as you can see it put the proper formatting now i will admit i know the fountain stuff because i did write somewhat of a short film before using fountain um it's actually very good if, if you're someone that prefers to work in kind of a markdown type of setup I do recommend this, to be honest. Um, so if I go down here, I can put uh, girl, and I'm just, but this is one of the issues, is to maintain standard, you do have to do, you do have to do that. So you want to hit space, so it keeps it capital, and then hit enter. And I'm going to do a parenthetical, looks at man, Confused. Did you bring me here? Troll S. As you can see, when you have this parenthetical under the under the character name, that's essentially telling the actor how they need to act, you know, or an expression that they need, you know, for a visual cue that they need to be doing. And then they're what they're supposed to say. So, you know, honestly, I really do like working in code this way. It's honestly just a very good way of doing stuff. But Trelby, now that it is somewhat under active development um i'm hoping that program gets more active updates so that we can have more stuff um in the next video i'm actually going to show some other software that i'm going to be using uh for like a storyboard storyboarding to give 
you know, if I have someone else operating a camera or maybe, you know, just a visual reference for someone I hire to do the acting, um, that'll be software I show. And obviously I'm going to be showing some other stuff because I have been learning stuff in Blender and DaVinci Resolve for compositing and stuff. But Blender will be honestly to add uh, some like uh, some light uh, visual effect stuff to be honest, because the script I'm writing is kind of more of a sci-fi thing. Um, but look forward to that uh, because I am going to write about possibly a five-minute segment to film. I'm going to get someone that's wanting to do it and uh, film just a short five-minute short film. And I'll actually do behind the scenes on all of that and everything when I do that. Uh, something I'm going to do all the breakdown for all of that because that is something I want to do. And obviously, I'm going to show all of that because it's all going to be done using Linux. Uh, there's going to be absolutely no Windows used in this because this is going to be mainly just teaching content creation for people that want to use Linux and want to get off of Mac and Windows. So look forward to that in future videos. Comment below anything you want to, uh, if you're interested in anything like doing stuff like this, writing short films and stuff. Because there's a lot of YouTubers that just do talking head videos, but then occasionally do kind of kind of cinematic short film stuff. This is something I'm going to do here on the channel to show more of that stuff pertaining to content creation for Linux users. Uh, but like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.